Hey yo, how's it going? Welcome to Sunburned Albano Plays West of Loathing episode. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's been a little while. I had to repri. I had to prioritize my series. So I had to start Kingdom Hearts and I had to continue Resident Evil so I didn't get to record any West of Loathing yesterday, but we're doing it now. And we're almost done because I'm just about done tarrying around here with all these, you know, I don't have any active side quests right now. And I've explored pretty much everywhere. I have to assume there's more things down here just because I feel like there was. But regardless, I'm just going to do the main quest for now. Right now. There's the telltale signs of a train robbery. Let's follow the tracks. You jump onto Milton's back and ride like the wind, following the railroad tracks back into the desert. When you finally catch up, you stand up on Milton's saddle and leap onto the back of the train like a real badass, just barely catching the edge of the roof and pulling yourself up. Here's hoping you don't have to do that again, your stuntman could have been killed. Looks like Gary decided not to join you on account of not having a stuntman, so you're on your own until you get back to Frisco. Phew. Let's do this. Yo, what's up? You are feeling neither fair nor square. We gonna take this train back by force, sir. I got my buffalo helper. And you're dead. I've had just about enough of you. No, you've... Yeah, you're gonna die. Well, you've kicked this whole Norton problem down the road a ways. I mean, down the train a ways. I mean, he ran a ways further down the roof of the train. Let's check out what's down here. Inside the stolen train. Someone has carefully stacked these crates with the this end up arrows all pointing in different directions. This barrel is labeled fruit. Oh, hand fruit. Pickled crackers. Nubs. It's a locked safe. We got the cargo car key. My safe kraken is immaculate. It's the key to the cargo car of the train. Let's unlock it. Which lets us in here. Oh, hello. These guys look angry and confused. Jump them. Alright, we'll do some damage here. They look... They're a con these, they are considerably weak. Like, super weak. Like, why am I even bothering? I blow on them and they die. Too bad that's not an attack. That just does, like, 23 damage. And 180 XP for that? Okay. Alright, let's unlock this door. To the dining car. Ooh, nice flowers. Investigate. You've never wanted anything more in your life than you want to lift up this dome and see what's under it. But you're not sure you can muster the amount of culinary expertise it requires to properly reveal a dish of such presumed quality. Let's do it. Et voila! Oh, it's just a cream pie. Shaving cream. What kind of lunatics are running the food service on this train? Well, we got a shaving cream pie. And if I use it... It's very aerodynamic. Oh, we're gonna be throwing that at somebody. The flowers are still standing. This table didn't deserve flowers. The door between the dining car and the sleeper car is welded shut. Okay, so now we gotta go up. There's Norton! You've got a clear shot at him from here if you want to throw that pie at him. Oh yeah. Bam! Take that! Curses! Foiled again! I've been defeated! You know. You can either just fight everybody or do like the puzzle related things maybe you'd better read that note on the wall first hey i disappeared for a second what note there's no note on the wall oh there it is now you'll let me do it the note says i've hidden the key to the forward passenger car in my luggage to make it easier for me to murder everyone in the sleeper car sincerely the train murderer P.S. Come to the roof of the sleeper car in the next 55 minutes if you want a murdering. Okay. Hmm, one of these sleeping compartments must belong to the murderer. Maybe it's the first one? You open the door to the first passenger compartment. The sole occupant is a little boy about 10 years old, wearing a blue suit and knickerbockers. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Is something wrong? 
Nothing you need to worry about, kid. I'm on the trail of a... a bad guy. Do you mean a murderer, sir? I'm pretty sure there's one on this train, and they don't call me the world's greatest detective for nothing. What's your name, kid? I probably shouldn't say, sir. There might be a copyright thing. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I can handle this. Just let me ask you one question, and then you should lock your door after I'm gone. I understand, sir. What would you like to know? Are you on the roof of the train? <laughs> Excuse me? The murderer left a note saying he's on the roof of the train. Are you? I... <laughs> no, sir. I'm in my passenger compartment. Right. Good. That'll be all. Ah. Oh. Mmm. Yummy. Hmm. One of these sleeping compartments must belong to the murderer. It's the second one. You open the door to the second passenger compartment and look inside. There's a portly man in a dapper gray suit with a tiny meticulously waxed mustache. And not, I'd like to clarify, an enormous bushy one. Excusez-moi, is there some way I might be of assistance, monsieur? Sorry to bother you, but there's a murderer on the loose, and I'm checking the passenger compartments. Sacre bleu! This is very serious, mon ami! Allow me to proffer to you the use of my little gray cells. I don't know what that means, but no thank you. Let me just ask you one question. Why, well, certainly! I am at your service! Are you on the roof of the train? The roof of the train, monsieur? Right now? That's right. No, I am here in conversation with you. Good, that is all. Maybe it's the third one. You open the door to the third passenger compartment and find nobody inside. Hmm, since the note from the murderer said he was going to be on the roof of the train, that means he couldn't be in his passenger compartment. And since there's no one inside this passenger compartment, whoever the compartment belongs to can only, by process of elimination, be on the roof. Which means the person who rented this compartment must be the murderer. Probably. The only clue you find in here is a luggage ticket, though. It has the number three on it. Hmm. The only passenger in this compartment is a middle-aged woman who is writing something in a notebook. She looks up as you enter and greets you with a friendly northeastern accent. I don't know what a northeastern accent is. It's like... Why, hello! Is there something you need, dear? I doubt that's what it is. Sorry to bother you, ma'am, and I don't want to alarm you, but there's a murderer on board the train and I'm investigating. Or would it be like New York? A murderer on a train, my goodness! That would be a wonderful premise for my next novel! Okay, I said New York and then I instantly went Jewish by accident. Let's keep it. Sure, why not? Anyway, I just need to ask you one question. Uh, go right ahead, dear! According to my evidence, the murderer is on the roof of the train. Are you on the roof of the train? Uh, no. No, dear. Alright, thanks for your time. Would you like a meat pie? They're homemade. No thanks. Just have a look at this playing card before you go. Goodbye. I'm sorry, would I just get something? Door to the passenger car is locked. Passenger car key. I unlock the door. You finally make it to the passenger car. One car back from the locomotive. Which may be confusing if you thought locomotive meant the entire train, so I could just say the engine, except that also refers to the engine itself. That is the actual steam engine that makes the train go, and not just the frontmost car of the train. Anyway, you're in the passenger car. Suddenly, Norton clambers in the window. He must have dramatically clung to the side of the train in order to reveal at the last minute that he hadn't actually been defeated. Dang it! He runs into the, uh, well, the frontmost car of the train and locks the door. What a jerk. Hmm, maybe you could get some of the passengers to help break the door down and arrest him? Or maybe you could just kick the door down and shoot him until he can't bother anybody anymore. Up to me. Well, firstly... I mean, we can't just leave a murderer loose on the train. It's the train murderer as advertised. Damn, that was hard. Just wrecking your whole life. You put an end to the train murderer's reign of murder. You rifle through his pockets, they're empty except for his luggage tag. Turns out his tag number is three. Hooray! Damn, what a mystery that was. This professorial looking guy is frowning at a sheet of paper and occasionally scribbling on it with a pencil and then erasing what he just wrote. Excuse me, can you help me with something? Sorry, I'm busy. Ask my wife or my daughter. God knows she could do with something to keep her occupied. What are you working on? 
It's quite academic. I'm sure you wouldn't understand. Try me. <sighs> if you must know, I'm a scholar of foreign antiquities. I'm attempting to resolve this ancient conundrum from the Far East. He shows you a sheet of paper covered with little boxes, some of which have numbers in them. Solve it for him. That's a Sudoku. My little brother thinks they're for babies. What? Look, this box can't be a 3 or a 7 because you've got those here and there, so it has to be a 4, which means it's 5 here and 9 here, and if that's a 9, then this can't be, so it's a 7 and this one's a 2. You quickly fill in the rest of the puzzle. Well, damn it, what fun is it if you just solve it for me? Sorry. Will you help me break down the door to the engine and arrest the Emperor? Well, I guess I've got nothing better to do now. Cool. This woman just ignores you. This guy is totally panicking, which is a word I just made up that means ranting in a frantic panic. Everyone else is ignoring him as hard as they can. Hey, buddy, you okay? It's all a lie! We're never gonna get to Frisco! Frisco probably doesn't even exist! They've been testing to see how long we can survive on complimentary peanuts and bottled water, and now they're driving us out into the desert to some kind of government camp! They're gonna use our organs to fuel alien flying machines! Snap him out of it. Whap, whap, whap. Ah! Oh, uh, sorry. Guess I lost it for a second there. Feel better? He rubs his jaw. Well, yes and no. Listen, we're gonna get to Frisco, but first we've gotta burst into the locomotive up front and arrest a crazy guy. I need some volunteers. Okay, I'm in. If I have to sit here doing nothing for much longer, I'll probably flip out again. Cool. This woman is focusing on her knitting and ignoring the general commotion. She must have been knitting the whole trip because the scarf she's made could accommodate a whole marching band. Excuse me, ma'am. Whatever it is, I want no part of it. I keep myself to myself, and I've no desire to get involved. Thank you very much. Come on, this is important. A crazy guy stole the train, and I need help arresting him, or you'll never get to Frisco. I'm sure everything will sort itself out in the end, and in the meantime, I have plenty of wool. Ooh, I can threaten her. You pick up the far end of her scarf and pull on the trailing length of yarn. Three or four rows unravel. Here now! Just what do you think you're doing? Lady, are you gonna help me arrest that nut in the driver's compartment, or are we gonna find out the answer to that age-old question, how long is a piece of string? All right, all right. Huh. Anything to get off this train and away from you faster. Okay, good. This overweight man, who is still a stick figure, in a three-piece suit and bowler hat is probably a banker or something. His eyes are closed and his posture is relaxed, but the clench of his jaw betrays his aggravation. Hi, excuse me? <sighs> yes, what is it? A crazy jerk calling himself Emperor Norton has hijacked the train. I need volunteers to help me bust down the door and arrest him. I see. And? And will you help me? Hmm. No, I'd really rather not. Sounds quite strenuous, perhaps even dangerous. Come on, please? No, I don't think so. I'm quite comfortable here, and I prefer to avoid stress. Pretty, please? Again, no. I'm supposed to avoid things that might raise my blood pressure. Pretty, please, with sugar on top? Sugar is one of those things. Pretty, please, with gravy on top? Gravy is another. Look, please, just leave me alone. Please, 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 no. Please, 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 no. Please, 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 stop that. Please, 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 please. I said no, stop asking. You're really getting on my nerves. Please, 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 I'll stop asking if you say yes. No, damn it. Please, 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 please. All right, God, fine, I'll help. Just leave me alone. Thanks. This man is too busy ignoring his daughter to not ignore you. This little girl is peering out the window of the train, clearly bored out of her mind. Hi there. Busy? No. All my toys and friends are in our luggage, and it's boring, and I hate it. Do you... <laughs> and friends. Do you want to help me out with something really important? Huh? Like what? Well, a bad guy took over the engine car, and I need some people to help me break down the door and arrest him. What? M Mister, I'm just a little girl. Hey, now, that's not a good attitude. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do anything just because you're a girl. But, uh, okay, yeah, we'll bust that crook's face in. Wow, that's the spirit. But you gotta pay me in advance. Jeez, you're learning a little too fast. All right, what do you want? Um, I like stuffed animals. A big plush owl? Wow, she's great. She takes the owl and gives it a big hug. Okay, mister, say the word and we'll show that jerk what for. Awesome. 
This lady is flipping through a book titled Birds of the Western Territory. Since most of the place is desert, it isn't a very long book. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? A crazed psycho has taken over the train's engine car, and I need volunteers to help break down the door and arrest him. Oh my, I certainly couldn't be of any help with that. I'm very conflict averse. Um, what if I told you he hates birds and is determined to outlaw them from the territory after he sees his power? That's very sly, but I know you're only saying that because you saw the book I was reading. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. Any other ideas to convince me? Suddenly you hear a, a tapping, a tapping at the passenger car window. What the? Russell! You open the window and your pet crow, Russell, flaps in and perches on your shoulder. Hey, buddy, good to see you. Gah! Oh my gosh, what a beautiful crow! And he knows you? Oh sure, me and Russell go way back, right buddy? Ah! I rescued him from a cat when he was only just out of the nest and raised him as a pet. I set him free when I left home recently. But what is he doing here? Has he been following you since then? No, he probably just happened to be flying by and spotted me on the roof of the train and recognized me. Crows are crazy smart like that. That's amazing! Oh, what I wouldn't give to have an avian friend like that! Well, I'm still gonna be doing a lot of traveling after this, I figure, so I really can't drag Russell along with me. But, I bet Russell wouldn't mind being pals with a nice lady in Frisco who helps save the train. What do you think, Russ? Russell calls again and flaps over to perch next to the lady. He lightly pecks at her shoulder in a friendly manner. Ah! My goodness, how could I refuse? It's a pleasure to meet you, Russell. My name's Annabelle. Awesome. I'll let you know when we're ready. Okay, I have five people. It's the door. Let's confront him. You pound on the door to the locomotive or engine car or cab or whatever. Open up, Norton. No! All right, then I'm coming in. Oh, yeah? You and what army, tough guy? You glance back at the passengers. Me and this army. You and the passengers break down the door very impressively, though it would have been even better if you had some torches and those old-fashioned rakes. Norton is backed up into the corner of the engineer's compartment next to the engineer who looks over his shoulder at you and shrugs. So-called Emperor Norton, you're under arrest for the crime of being a total ass. That's not illegal. It is when I'm in town. Everybody grab him. Except you, Mr. Engineer. I can see you're busy driving the train. Right. Actually, if you could turn around and head back to Frisco at the next station, that'd be great. No problem. Ugh, ow, let go. This isn't over. You haven't heard the last of me. Tell it to the judge, Norton. The prison judge. You did it. Thanks, boss. No problem. We got the track laid right up to the station now. The first ever cross-territory railroad, thanks to the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company. And principally you. You did a real good job, Jeb Bush. Aw, oh, shucks, don't mention it. Aw, oh, nobody's ever said that about Jeb Bush before. Oh, ho, ho, ho! Partisan. I don't care. I don't know anything. That's pretty much all there is to do. Now playing the final cutscene. This is the end, fellas. Let's get it. Looks like somebody on that train got a job as the projectionist. Would you like to watch this movie? It's free, because movies have only recently been invented, and nobody has figured out that they can charge for them yet. No, doing this will not change anything about the world or your character. When the cutscene is over, you'll still be right here, and you can keep playing if you want. Sure. Some folks say endings don't matter. But other folks... They like to know how things turn out. The consequences of their actions, like. With the trains running again, Frisco thrived. People came from all over to seek their fortunes. But thanks to you, they didn't have to do it while on fire because some cow attacked their wagon. Oh yeah, it thrives. With the railroad completed and Norton ousted, Smee found himself out of a job, but in of an opportunity. After being elected mayor, he managed the growth and infrastructure of Frisco with compassion and pragmatism. In 1944, Frisco was named Most Reasonable City by the Tuesday Evening Post.
After you got settled in, Gary climbed to the top of the tallest building in Frisco and shot spores every which way. They say his descendants still roam the west to this day. Gross. After she finished getting the bakery boys up and running, Louise moved to Frisco and opened her own shop, specializing in artisanal breads and pies. Unfortunately, after some unknown vandal kept breaking in at night and destroying all of the pies, she had to switch to a breads-only business model. Thanks to your assistance, Hobart Buppert got the photography bug. Or should we say the photography owl? Anyway, he opened an art gallery so the citizens of Frisco would never again have to suffer from the inability to see pictures of owl skeletons whenever they wanted. Kurtz left the fort and set up shop in Frisco. His cult <clears throat> fitness group skyrocketed in popularity. The growth was entirely due to word of mouth, because the first rule of Kurt's fit is that you cannot stop talking about Kurt's fit. Oh, I wish I could do that. The cultists you rescued eventually joined a different cult, but the new one is quite a bit safer than the old one, since it's mostly about annoying people on the streets instead of unearthing ancient evil destructors. Okay. With your help, the professor gained enough knowledge about El Vibrato technology to start building his own. He opened a very successful consumer technology store in Frisco, and for decades, people spent all their time staring at little computers in their hands instead of talking to one another. Oh my god, art reflects life. The performers you sent to Dirtwater formed the greatest band in the history of music. The perfect union of percussion, strings, and technology, they immediately secured their place in the cultural history of loathing. Their songs were innovative, their stage presence was spectacular, and the liner notes on their albums were extremely clever and interesting. They called themselves the Aristocrats. That's disgusting. Buffalo 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 Bill retired from the killin' trade and made a killin' open up a restaurant in Frisco. Oh, Buffalo 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 Wild 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 Wings. I don't like Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't like wings at all. Hot wings, any, like, it's, they're not for me. You solved all of Breadwood's problems. With the increase in morale and civic resources, they were able to clear the weeds from the road and fix the well and the broken hitching post. There was even enough left over to give the mayor's office a new coat of paint, refresh the facade on the buttery biscuit, and add a second story to the bunkhouse. They even managed to get that horse into rehab. Nice. I know, we never found that necromancer. Like, I don't understand where he is. His job of guarding Curly's meat finished, Holloway moved on to the next chapter of his tragic life. You're guessing he'll turn up in another game someday. Chuck continued to run his blood and breakfast without incident, accident, scandal, or allegation for many years. You won four of the reenactment scenarios at Fort Memoriam. They still talk about you. Remember when that Jeb fella came through here? Yeah, he was really, really good at this game. Do we have any more root beer? With your help, Roy Bean's Jelly Bean Museum became the talk of the town. Well, first they had to build a town nearby, but once they did, hoo-wee! Yeah! Museum! Kids love museums! Dirtwater became, relatively speaking, a thriving metropolis. Thanks to your efforts as a commerce ambassador and all-around helpful stranger, the once sleepy town became a shining oasis in a barren land. Every man, woman, and child in the town knew your name. 
They even put up a little plaque with your name on it in your old room at the Jewel. I don't see no plaque. Just says guest rooms. But sure, okay. Yeah, I'm feeling really immortalized right now. As for you, after your adventure, you settled in Frisco and bought a very long, very narrow house. You filled it with souvenirs of your exploits and started an antique hat rack collection. When you left home, you told Rufus you wanted to help people. Over the course of your adventure, you helped 63 people. You weren't whistling Dixie when you declared your intentions. If you had been Catholic, they definitely would have sainted you if you had asked, but you wouldn't have asked because you wouldn't want to be any trouble. Oh yeah, look at my hat rack. There's one hat, there's the same hat, except longer brim. I kept all my hats on purpose. Like, I really didn't get that many hats. Ridiculous. Got my spittoon hat. In 1906, all of the remaining cows in the West were simultaneously activated by some kind of signal from hell. They thundered east, forming a gigantic single-minded herd. The bovine taint in your blood, not dulled any by the passage of time, compelled you to join them. The infernal sadist Duke Bovicus took command of the cow army and drove it east into dirt water. Uh, I did not want to join them. That's bad. Now I'm bad. Fortunately, a gang of rodeo clowns swept in at the last minute and slaughtered the herd just before it reached Dirtwater. Unfortunately, all of the townsfolk of Dirtwater had a hard time sleeping for pretty much the rest of their lives. Seriously, it was a grisly sight. 420 years later, deep beneath the ground, ancient machines silently stopped doing the thing they were built to do. It's probably fine. You and everybody you know are dead by then, and most of humanity has moved to space. Still, though, it's a shame about the planet. There were some cool bars there. Yeah, I never finished the El Vibrato stuff either. I did in my last one, and I watched the cutscene. It was something about, like, how just people learned to utilize El Vibrato technology, and it made everybody prosperous or some shit. But that's West of Loathing, y'all. Uh, you know what? We're not done yet. Because where is the necromancer? In West of Loathing, I'm gonna go fight it. Necromancer's Tower, West of Loathing. Wiki. Okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna do this. It's located northwest of Fort Memoriam. It is only unlocked by finding all the clues that go in your necromancer journal. Okay. Find the hints and collect them in the, yeah, easily completed by interacting with every object in every area as you explore the west. If you have found and examined all other hints, examining the final clue, the sticky note that reveals the location and the password. Well, what are all the hints? All right, let me see my Necromancer's journal here. Yeah, we're only 29 minutes into this. Like, we got time. Necromancer's journal. Where are you? All right, you've narrowed the location down. Yeah, it's very clever. Yeah, it's, yeah, so we're fairly close to Hellstrom Ranch. Yes, knowledge of mushrooms. Narrow down the location to a strip of land between the big canyon and the mountains between there and dirt water. Yes, you found a note. The magic word required to enter the tower once you find it. Abracadabra! E excellent. What else am I missing? Okay, let me click on the necromancer journal here. Clues. Robe receipt. Pretty sure I got that one.
Ley Line Diagram, which is also added to your journal. We did that. Burned Scroll, you need to have visited Hellstrom Ranch. Did that. Discipline Slip, you need to have acquired the Pass and Fair Mycologist perk. Did that. Right? Do we still have the discipline or do we still have the discipline slip and now that I have the perk, I have to actually like read it. Discipline slip. Yeah, here's the robe receipt. You read over the receipt again. Who could need that many robes? You stick the rest of it. It I it wasn't I didn't I hadn't done that before. Wow. Okay. That might have that might have been it then. Like I might not have to do anything else. So let's read the journal again. Receipt. Looking at it more closely, you see there's a surcharge for delivery pass, Boulder Pass. Definitely west of the mountains. Yeah, progress. It sure was. Yes, indeed. I have discovered the map location, and it's Abracadaver. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, I knew you were around here. Obviously, once... Oh, God. You shouldn't even need any of these other clues. The only clue you should need is, oh, it's somewhere near Hellstrom Ranch. Oh, hey, look, right here. Jesus. All right, let's do this thing. Dude, this is in the second area. They, no, no one here stands a chance against me. Abracadaver! Some strange, undecipherable runes. It's a fountain of blood. Yeah, I'm not gonna drink that. Ooh, let's dive in and kill him. Okay, finally a row of dudes. Where gore might actually be something. Bang. They have 66 muscle. They're pretty strong. You better reduce their stats. Yeah, okay, Gary. You're going. Oh, well, they can't do damage to me. That's the important thing. Do they ever attack Buffalo Bill? I don't know that I've ever seen that. Please shoot one of the guys at the bottom. Thank you, because now I can gore these two. Now please shoot one of the dudes in the bottom row that is not the first dude, so that I may gore the dudes at the bottom, please. Come on, Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Show me you've got some an eye for strategy. Oh my god, why? Get gored, son! But yeah, this is all new to me, which is terrific. Multiple playthroughs of a game like this will do you well. Mmm, get gored a final time. The more we kill, the shorter their turn takes. And we're just fine. Please shoot someone in the middle or the back. Please. God damn it. Okay, fine. 132 to 134, it's not enough to kill. So close to one shot you. So close. Oh my god, hurry up, oh my god, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, I'm gonna get him again, I'm gonna get him again, I'm gonna get him I sure wish you didn't do fixed damage. I mean, I like it in the beginning when you're doing like 75 HP. I don't like when it goes down to 11. You single-handedly defeated all eight of those skeletons. Hey! Sorry, I mean you single-handedly defeated all nine of those skeletons. 
Well, yeah, Gary, you did not help. Let's not pretend. We have a ton of XP. Okay. Uh, Gore needs to be stronger. And we don't need to do gumption at all. Look at that. Look at I've got 141 muscle? Crap. Holy hell. Oh, we should have done tough customer also. Is there anything else that we really need? We can increase our armor. Sure, like do that. And then from there, we can improve menacing move. And then if Gary's minus three stats ain't cutting it, you know, we could do that just to help keep him alive. And we don't know what the runes do. Well, there's a big old pillar of skulls blocking your path. There was bound to be one of these in here somewhere, right? Excuse me, fellas, I need to get past here. The skulls hiss and chitter and giggle at you. So that's a no, then? Grr, get out of my way, you skulls. I'm not taking any crap from the likes of you. I'll knock all your teeth in, and what do you have left except teeth? Not much. You grab one of the skulls off of the pile, smash it face first into the floor, and then kick it out the window. There's a whole lot of you, so this is going to take a while, but I'm, not on a tight, but I'm not on a tight schedule. I can do this all day. The skulls continue to chitter and hiss, but they've stopped giggling. The pillar breaks up as the skulls scuttle roll away to hide in the walls. That's right. That's 540 XP right there. That is quite a lot. Increase bull stomp, yeah. No. Increase the old one, two, three. I still have yet to meet an enemy I can't one-shot with that. Ooh, thump and smash. Oh, I'm sure, like, if we did necromancer stuff, like, if we, you know, like, we did the rituals and we, you know, learned the spells and stuff, then we would know what the runes are and then we could get past this, I'm sure. These two skeletons have their names written on their foreheads, so they won't forget them. Actually, wait, maybe they each have the other one's name. Ooh, what you gonna do, huh? You gonna do absolutely nothing? That's what I thought. Cause you dead. You just a big old softy. Eh? <laughs> you got nothing. Alright! Gary proving his metal at every situation. I mean, is there is there shroom girl that I missed somewhere? I'm sure there is. But I didn't, you know, I didn't have any side missions. You know, I they they glitched out the friggin' the cow mission with the rodeo clowns and the circus and stuff. Because I... Sorry I'm ahead of the game by accident. Like, that wasn't even me doing something early because I'd done it before. That was me... My intuition is so good that I broke the quest. Because I did something I wasn't supposed to know to do yet. Because I'm amazing. Like, sorry. Ooh, are you the Necromancer King? You approach the throne and the withered husk sitting on it. Unbelievable. All that killing, all that horror, and this is what's behind it? He tries to speak to you, but all that comes out is dust. Let's destroy him. You puff a breath at the Necromancer and he crumbles to powder. His crown hits the ground and shatters into a thousand pieces. Well, so much for that and good riddance. An evil, evil throne. Well, I can tell you that the Necromancer Tower stuff is fantastic for XP. Like, holy damn. Is that it? That's really it, huh? Okay, then. Well, we did it. I assume if Doc, whatever her name is, 
was our teammate, she'd be like super vindicated right now. You know what? I'm gonna drink the blood. It's found the blood. Nothing weird about that. The blood is delicious, like meaty Kool-Aid. Ooh, I'm dark blooded now. You know, we're pretty much done with this series, so why not ruin my character real quick? Plus 30 maximum HP. Okay, I've ran you I thought that would have been like a thing that would give me a negative effect. Negative necromancer effect, but sure. Sure, man. Okay, well that's done. Well, that's gonna do it for this series. West of Loathing is done. Uh, if there's ever a future game, I would play it and enjoy it, I'm sure, so. Anyway, uh, that's gonna do it for this, yeah, series. Uh, like, share, and subscribe and whatnot. And I will see you guys in some other series. Okay, see ya.